We're talking to Ms. Amber Gooden, and the topic is the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. And of course, Ms. Gooden, let's uh, give you an opportunity to uh, talk about some aspects of uh, the uh, Tennessee Human Rights Commission. And as we indicated earlier, when we introduced you, we said that you were the executive, executive director. And so give us sort of a, a, an overview of uh, the uh, organizational structure of the uh, Tennessee Human Rights Commission and how that structure sort of fits into the uh, Civil Rights Act of uh, 1964. I'd be glad to. Um, here in Tennessee, uh, we have 15 board members, commissioners, that are appointed by the governor of the state. Uh, five represent each grand division. So five out of West Tennessee, five out of Middle, five out of East Tennessee that are on six year staggered terms. Um, in this area, for instance, some of our board members, our chairman is here in Middle Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Spencer Wiggins, mm -hmm. um, other board members, uh, uh, Dr. Joseph Walker mm -hmm. uh, just came on our board, mm -hmm. uh, Stacy Garrett, who's an attorney mm -hmm. here and so forth. Uh, we are very pleased to have uh, the Reverend Billy Kyles, mm -hmm. uh, head of Operation Push out of, out of Memphis, and very mm -hmm. instrumental, mm -hmm. as, as people know through documentaries, mm -hmm. was right there when Dr. Martin Luther King was, was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, so w we, we enjoy the, the legacy of having great board mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. like that. Um, the board then turns around and formally hires the executive director. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, the executive director oversees the staff. We have four offices mm -hmm. across the state, Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, mm -hmm. Knoxville, mm -hmm. and, um, and Memphis. Uh, we have a staff of about 30. Most of those on mm -hmm. staff are investigators. Those mm -hmm. are the people who, who, who get the complaints mm -hmm. and investigate mm -hmm. them, review them, and make a recommendation um, to the commission to act upon them. Mm -hmm. We have uh, three people on our legal staff. Mm -hmm. So we have in-house counsel mm -hmm. that uh, reviews them. I want to give people also a sense of, of in terms of the level of review good. that okay. takes place. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people just think um, that um, they're just people out there working independently mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they want to say, well, that, that investigator was biased mm -hmm. and, and that investigator Do you didn't have that like as a charge? Yeah, uh -huh. well, sometimes we have that, that, mm -hmm. that happen. Sometimes we have a very diverse staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two people of Hispanic descent on our staff, one of, of Czechoslovakian uh, mm -hmm. uh, nature, people, two people from Africa. And sometimes that with that diversity, people sometimes think that because someone maybe doesn't talk like them okay. or look like mm -hmm. them, that maybe somehow that they aren't equipped mm -hmm. to understand their situation. Mm -hmm. But our investigators are fact finders. Mm -hmm. Their job is to gather the information, is mm -hmm. to review the witnesses, to review, to interview mm -hmm. the, what we call the respondent. Yes. That's usually the mm -hmm. company in which the, the person has, um, has waged a complaint mm -hmm. against. And then to make a recommendation. And that recommendation is reviewed by our legal staff. Mm -hmm. And then it is, it is reviewed ultimately by me. And as well as then a final recommendation or, mm -hmm. or information is given to the board. But it's also reviewed back by the federal agencies. Mm -hmm. All of our information goes back to EFC mm -hmm. and all of it goes to HUD. And then their folks look at it. And so, it, and it, so, it, so if, if, if there's some bias in terms of your e evaluation of a case, then there's a possibility that you can be overruled. Is that is that well, what we're saying? Well, definitely. It's to give. It's to give. Um, it, it's to make sure that there are a lot of eyes looking at things to make mm -hmm. sure we've covered all aspects of the law. I will say that that I have not seen in the year and a half that I've been there, and I've really heard it before. Well, really, a, an investigator has an opportunity mm -hmm. to have a bias because you have to look at things in the strict letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, when somebody files a complaint, what they do is that they fill out a complaint form. They can call our office, mm -hmm. go to our website, have one mailed to them, and that information is taken down. They're going to list witnesses, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to send out a formal letter to that company or let's say, or to that landlord mm -hmm. in the case of housing or something that's, like that's that. For them from to, your office. From our yeah. office. Mm -hmm. And um, many times when I have spoken at forums, um, I spoke at one in Jackson not long ago in which there were a number of employers mm -hmm. there who were talking about the, the cost of diversity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I spoke about was, was that when companies don't put an internal complaint process mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. w by the time when somebody files a complaint with us, they're having to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. because they have to, by law, answer that charge. Mm -hmm. They can't look at it and say, Oh, that's just forget it. That's you, it. Uh -huh. Forget it. By uh -huh. the time it gets to us, they've got to answer mm -hmm. it. And we have mediated a number of c cases, mm -hmm. which is a real strong program that we have with us, where people are not necessarily admitting guilt, mm -hmm. but where the parties want to get together and work it out. And you would be surprised that sometimes 
that it has only taken an apology mm -hmm. to, okay. from a supervisor uh -huh. okay. to somebody, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that a misunderstanding. So mm -hmm. not everything results in monetary mm -hmm. damages mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, but many times through mediation, and what I find when I speak so passionately mm -hmm. about that is, is that I think many times that people have forgotten how to sit down and talk mm -hmm. and listen. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to talk us out of a job, okay. <laughs> per se, I can understand. but uh -huh. at the same time, mm -hmm. we are there to, to, mm -hmm. to try to get the best for mm -hmm. both parties mm -hmm. and involved. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's interesting that many times that that's, that's all it mm -hmm. is, is sometimes people misunderstood mm -hmm. a comment that someone made. But at the same time, we are also there mm -hmm. to deal with very serious issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those very serious issues that we see on the rise is in the area of, of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Uh -huh. uh, Race-based complaints still probably outnumber all of them, mm -hmm. but um, sexual harassment complaints okay. are mm -hmm. on the rise. Now, what's your definition mm -hmm. of sexual harassment in terms of the uh, Tennessee Human Rights Commission? Well, under, in, um, in, in most companies I haven't found it one who does not have some type of policy mm -hmm. out there but it usually what it what it entails is where someone ha that that comments have been made mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or gestures and so forth that have made that person feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. they have expressed that and it still mm -hmm. con it continues, continues okay. and, mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, a case that's already been settled some time ago, but a good a good one was where the person filed a complaint with mm -hmm. her employer uh, that her that a person was she felt was harassing mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. would call her things like that, try to corner her outside mm -hmm. the workplace, things like that. The company responded by making that person her boss. Mm -hmm. That was such an end. Well, was, was, was that, uh, was that uh, the way they wanted to respond? Or were they well, trying to deliver a message? Or it's, it's, it's not real clear. Sometimes mm -hmm. people, I have to say, are just ignorant. Mm -hmm. And many times that, um, I think this was in a case in a manufacturing situation, mm -hmm. very few women, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, and that sometimes people just don't know mm -hmm. that instead of taking it lightly, okay. they they responded in a in a frivolous manner. Mm -hmm. But that was considered retaliation mm -hmm. because she filed a complaint and she had a right mm -hmm. to have that complaint investigated. Mm -hmm. It was responded back with essentially as if we don't think there's any merit mm -hmm. to that. Well, if that person was made her boss, that person uh, essentially mm -hmm. accosted her okay. and so forth, and she filed a complaint, and it resulted in um, a, a very sizable uh, settlement you on, know, well, on her behalf. And, 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 of course, we've got about two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's let's look at, and since you mentioned uh, monetary settlements, mm -hmm. uh, are you at liberty to talk about some of these monetary se settlements? What, what has been the uh, highest monetary settlement that you've had uh, in, 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 in your administration? Um, in my administration, I um, I believe it was that one, and that was over um, uh, close to 100000 Mm-hmm. So you ha you actually have uh, uh, complaints that are monetary complaints mm -hmm. that uh, will uh, draw a fine of a hundred at least a hundred thousand dollars. Well, and that that was an agreement. That was an agreement instead of going to to mm -hmm. to, to court that the parties mm -hmm. agreed upon. Mm -hmm. uh, she had her job back. The other mm -hmm. person was fired. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at things in terms of damages and mm -hmm. and and so forth and what action a company has taken to try to mm -hmm. rectify. Uh, a situation. Mm -hmm. Not everything results in when we see on the news okay. these big, you know, hundred million dollar, uh -huh. you know, types mm -hmm. of, of awards. I always try to caution people and we also try to make sure that we are not lawyers for either party. Mm -hmm. What we try to do is is we we have attorneys who are there for the commission mm -hmm. and try to advise what was in the best interest of fairness. Uh, more fairness more exactly. More and what's fair in one situation mm -hmm. may not be mm -hmm. fair in in mm -hmm. in another. So mm -hmm. Um, we always, you know, try to get people to look at what their own circumstance and what their own goal is. Mm -hmm. Some people have accepted, for instance, that um, in, a, in a case that involved uh, a handicapped individual, instead of the uh, person um, giving him money, he mm -hmm. wanted money donated to an agency that trained seeing eye dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was that was reward so enough for him. So that was his reward. That, uh -huh, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Okay, we've got about 54 seconds. Sure. Uh, let's uh, have you to make uh, some final statements okay. in reference to uh, that within the last 50 seconds. Well, thank you. Um, I just like to close with mm -hmm. um, that the 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 whole purpose and the reason that the Tennessee mm -hmm. Human Rights Commission uh, was ever enacted came out of the federal 1964 mm -hmm. uh, Civil Rights Act, mm -hmm. and that was to allow people an opportunity mm -hmm. to have their issues and complaints mm -hmm. heard on a state level mm -hmm. and to receive uh, relief and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the, 
racism is still there. Many times people mm -hmm. don't like to think that mm -hmm. it is, but it's it's yeah. it's mm -hmm. there. Uh, it's uh, it's growing, especially in the areas of housing, as our mm -hmm. population becomes more diverse. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are ways in which we continue to need to educate and okay. eradicate. And very good. And of course, uh, Ms. Gooden, uh, we apologize for having well, to uh, call you. an end to this, but let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Cummins. Thank you and good morning. Thank you.